Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today I'm going to be very transparent with you guys and share my progress and what I've learned from LeetCode and how to do these questions. So if you look here, this is my LeetCode account, and if you see here, I've done about a um, little bit over 100 questions, and I know that's not a lot, but this has definitely taught me um, how to deal with these problems and how to know when I'm failing and understand why I'm failing these questions. So I'm not perfect, and I wanted to share these uh, ideas with you guys so it helps you use LeetCode more effectively. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and smash that subscribe button because I'm going to be creating more content like this for you guys. So let's get into it and let's get started. So I've outlined here five issues that I have faced and I'm sure you have also faced when doing leak codes. So the first issue that I want to discuss is focus. And what I mean by focus is um, not knowing which areas you are uh, lacking your information practice or skills in. And the solution to that is creating a skills matrix. So let me give you an example and walk you through what a skill matrix looks like. Okay, so this is a skills matrix that I created when I started doing LeetCode. And what I did is I identified what my strength level was for each topic. And I have outlined all the topics that I could group together. So um, if you want this template, let me know in the comments below and I can email it to you so you can get started with your um, skills matrix as well. So what I would do is I would go in and say, okay, well, I'm pretty good at hash map problems and I'm pretty good at um, arrays and iteration. That's pretty good, but I suck at DFS problems sometimes. and that's a realization that your brain took that said to you, okay, well, I need to do some more of these types of problems. And it really helped me identify what type of problems I need to focus on to improve my skills. Awesome, so now you've filled out your skill matrix and you've identified what you need to focus on. Now the next item on the list is to know how to improve on those specific focused items. And this is a problem that I face even today and that is active recall. So active recall means how you're able to solve a problem um, which is similar to something you've done and you need to remember how you solved it in the past and apply that same solution. So how well is your recall to know in your brain that, okay, uh, well, if this is the question given, then I should solve it this way. And one of the worst mistakes that I made as a beginner was just to um, look at the answer when I was like, when I read the question five minutes later, I was just like frustrated and I was like, I don't even understand the question. <laughs> and I would just look at the solution. And what that did is it really hurt my recall. So the next time I saw a question like that, I wasn't really able to remember how I solved that previous question. And one strategy to apply here to get into that active recall mindset is to time box your problem solving. And what this means is you throw everything you can at a problem for 20 minutes. Give yourself a limit, like, you know, you don't want to waste like two hours, but it's just to like sit there and put all of yourself into that problem and apply 100% of what you can. And this really helps your brain um, practice the active recall. So you know that when you see a similar problem, you have some items to throw at that problem to try and solve it. And I think this is one of the most important mistakes that I made and I, I'm sure you have made these kind of mistakes too, but it's really to sit there and really try really, really hard to apply those um, solutions to the question. Okay, great. So now you're in the recall time box, but you still can't figure out like what to apply to this problem. And this happens a lot. It still happens to me today. Sometimes I'm just really, really stuck. And it's really hard to get from that position to a position where you have some ideas in your brain. So what I'm trying to say is how not to space out during this time box. Like if you have no ideas, how do you deal with that, right? So for this solution, what I uh, recommend is having a mental flow chart. So if you're given a question where you need to perform um, some type of search and you're given a sorted array, the first thing that should come to your mind to optimize the solution is binary search. And did you see how my brain took that piece of information? So it took the inputs um, and it was directly able to come up with, okay, this is what I need to do. So your brain needs to have some type of uh, connections that lead you to uh, have some ideas at least to solve the problem. And I know this is a little bit hard to grasp because um, the flow chart will only get better the more your neurons fire together and the more practice you do and the more experience you have. So it may not be the first thing you're gonna solve out of this list, but I think once you're at a point where you can tell, okay, if these are my inputs, this is sort of what um, the solution should look like. I think that's a great place where you can be like, okay, yeah, I'm good. Like I'm able to recall, I'm able to focus on my areas of improvement and I'm able to take the input in and have some type of idea of how to solve this problem. Okay, awesome. So let's say you have some ideas now about how to solve this problem through your mental flow chart, which is great. But now you are looking at a similar problem, but you don't know how to apply the previous knowledge you had to this problem. And this is very, very common. And I have this today. I'm just like, oh, I solved a problem like this, but I just don't know how exactly to apply it into this problem. So for this, I have the solution of the 80-20 rule. And for those of you who are not familiar with this, it's to 
apply 20% of what you know to 80% of problems in this case, in the context of lead code. Um, it's not possible to do 1500 lead code questions. So if you did only 100, how do you maximize, how do you scale that knowledge to a larger group of problems? And the answer to this is to just knowing that 20% really, really well to the point where you can sleep and like solve that problem. So whatever problem you're doing, make sure you give it 100%. So you pay 100% of attention to how that problem was solved. And after you solve it, just review how you solved that problem and how you can apply this solution to scale to other similar problems. Because at the end of the day, even if you're doing a thousand problems, and if you're not able to scale to the one problem you're asked, then there's no point doing a thousand problems. You could do the minimum amount of problems and really get to know the core details of those problems to apply it to multiple other problems. Okay, so the last and one of the most important uh, thing to keep in mind when you're trying to solve these problems is to understand your reach. Because if you're trying to do a hard problem on your day one, you're probably going to struggle and you're not going to be able to do it. And then you're going to get frustrated and look at the answer, right? So you need to have some self-awareness and be realistic with yourself. If you're struggling with medium questions, maybe it's a good idea to do some similar easy level questions. Or if you're looking at a problem like, um, you know, which has a number two after it, which is generally a medium question, then you may want to go back and look at the number one of that same problem to solve it at a lower level before reaching for the higher levels of the mountain. Um, because at the lowest level are the easy questions. And once you're able to do a lot of the easy questions, then maybe you can try doing some of the medium questions. Or what you can do is if you do an easy question that is similar to a medium question, then you could try and solve that medium question, applying the knowledge of your easy question, which again goes back to the flowchart way of thinking and the scalability of your mind. Um, so the two things that I really struggle with out of these five things are definitely recall and reach. And I know these two items um, really, really, really affect me and it affects my um, you know, self-confidence. And I've just tried to be very honest with you guys with this video. I'm not some kind of superhuman. Um, I'm just trying my best here to help you and try to create a solution that is easy to understand and easy to follow and give you ideas for your flowchart in solving your algorithms. So I hope you like this video. Please give this video a like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know what are the problems that you struggle with the most out of this list in the comments below so we can keep the channels open for communication. Awesome. Happy coding, guys. Bye.